My parents disowned me, so I became rich, but now they want me back in. When I was 16, I found a letter from MIT in our mailbox, full scholarship for their computer engineering program. My hands shook as I showed it to my father at dinner. He read it silently, then tore it in half. The farm needs you, he said flatly. My mother stared at her plate, saying nothing as usual. Our family owned 80 acres of struggling farmland in Nebraska. Three generations of Millers had worked this land, and I was supposed to be the fourth. College wasn't part of that plan. That night, I heard them arguing. He's smarter than both of us, Mom said. Dad's voice boomed through the walls. And what happens to everything we built? You want him looking down on us from some fancy office while we lose everything? I applied again in secret, using my teacher Mrs. Hernandez's address. When the second acceptance came, I packed a duffel bag and left a note. Dad found me at the bus station. You walk out that door, you're no son of mine, he said, voice breaking. I got on the bus anyway. First semester, I lived on ramen and worked nights cleaning the engineering building. My roommate noticed I never went home for holidays. Instead, I stayed in the empty dorm and taught myself Python from library books. For extra money, I started fixing other students' laptops. Word spread that I could recover lost term papers from crashed hard drives. The basketball team's captain paid me $50 to retrieve his thesis. Soon, I had a waiting list. During sophomore year, I developed a data recovery algorithm that worked better than commercial software. My professor suggested I patent it. He connected me with a lawyer who took the case for a percentage. I tried calling home on Christmas. Dad hung up when he heard my voice. Mom texted later. Give him time. I stopped trying after that. The patent was approved my junior year. A cybersecurity firm licensed my algorithm. The first royalty check paid off my student loans. I graduated with job offers from three tech companies. I chose a startup in Austin, developing security systems. Within two years, I led their recovery division. When a major data breach hit the news, our solution saved a Fortune 500 company from collapse. At 26, I launched my own data security firm. We specialized in agricultural technology, protecting farm equipment from hackers, securing crop data. I never told my team why I focused on that sector. Last month, my company went public. Three days later, a Facebook message arrived from my mother. We're so proud of you, it said, as if the last eight years hadn't happened. A week later, a certified letter came from a lawyer in Nebraska. My parents' farm was $340,000 in debt. Equipment loans, bad harvests, medical bills from dad's back surgery. The bank was foreclosing in 30 days. The letter ended with my father's cell number. I stared at that number for hours before calling. His voice sounded older, smaller somehow. Son, he said, like he'd never thrown me away. We made mistakes. We met at a steakhouse near their farm. Mom hugged me too tight. Dad's hands had new calluses. His face more lines. They avoided mentioning money for the first hour. Finally, Dad cleared his throat. The farm's been in our family since your great-grandfather. We can't lose it. He slid a folder across the table. Loan statements. Foreclosure notices. We're not asking for a handout. Maybe you could be a partner. I looked at these strangers wearing my parents' faces. The same people who told me I was dead to them for wanting an education. I took out my phone, made a transfer, then showed them the screen. Enough to clear their debt and modernize the equipment. This isn't a partnership, I said. It's a business transaction. The farm now belongs to my company's agricultural division. You can stay on as managers with salary and benefits. Or you can leave. Your choice. Mom started crying. Dad's face flushed red. You'd make your own parents employees? You made me an orphan for wanting a future, I replied. Consider this mercy. I stood to leave then paused. That scholarship you tore up? I'm funding 10 of them each year for rural kids who want to study technology. I'm naming it after Mrs. Hernandez, not you. They've left six voicemails since then. I've listened to each one, but haven't called back. Some bridges can't be rebuilt once they're burned.